Hey guys, this is my Procreate painting for the Mermaid event for 2023. You're watching a time lapse with commentary. Please enjoy, let me know what you think. So I wanted to start off with a detailed pencil drawing instead of doing a painting. The reason for that is I always feel like my drawings lose something if I ink over them and then I erase all the pencil lines. It just feels way too simplified and lacking in detail, even cartoony or like a, a stencil or stamp. Maybe I just need to practice on my painting more instead of my line work. Anyway, I drew something with the pencil brush recently and I really liked how it came out. So I figured I was going to do a detailed pencil drawing. I'll have all the line work laid out, all the shading. And once I was really happy with the composition and the shading, I would just lay my colors on top of that. When I think about competitive swimmers, they're not skinny. They have athletic bodies. If someone's going to spend most of their time in the water, like our mermaid, they're going to have to swim constantly to keep from sinking. So we need our mermaid to have some realistic muscle tone. A lot of mermaid pictures look like a person in a costume. Let's be real. It's as if a person is just standing in a sack. You can see where their knees are. And to me, that doesn't look like something you would find in nature. It just looks fake. I did a search on mermaid anatomy and there are a few different people out there who came up with some really nice detailed drawings about the way their skeletons might look. And instead of having legs coming out of their hip sockets, they would have pelvic fins. And then, of course, the rest of the body could actually look like a fish. There would also be something called an anal fin because they have to do their business like everyone else. What kind of scales would a mermaid have? There are a few different kinds of scales, but if we limit our search to bony fish, the option I went with was cycloid scales, and I patterned them after the common carp fish. Now here's where I started filling in the scales. There's no shortcut here. I zoomed in and I drew them one at a time. I tried to keep a symmetry and, and wrap them to the contours of the body. Something that I did differently with this painting is the way I use references. When I first started learning Procreate, I imported my reference images and I put them in a separate layer. So I could kind of toggle them on and off, I could move them around, but it doesn't take long for me to start running out of layers. Because with my device, my canvas size, I like to use a 3000 by 4000 pixel, uh, it limits me to only 40 layers. With all the different elements in there, I like to have separate layers for things, so that wasn't gonna work. I tried using the reference window, which is a Procreate feature, but I wasn't crazy about that either. What works best for me is to have my images in my camera roll. So here you can see my workflow with a split screen and it lets me swipe through and zoom in to my images, have them all on the side. One big question I had to answer was, what would a mermaid be wearing? Since I was going for realism, I, I tried thinking about found objects. I wasn't going to use shells or starfish. I thought that was just cheesy. I didn't want it to be fabric scavenged from sunken ships. What if there are no ships around? That's just cheating. I couldn't come up with anything that she could have made with materials that were readily available to her. What could you find on the seafloor? So now, as a sidebar, uh, I've gotten some feedback that this mermaid looks masculine. Part of that is probably due to her athletic build. It's not what people expect. Uh, I think it could also be because she isn't wearing any makeup. How would you do makeup underwater? Uh, and I want all my content to be family friendly. So I was not trying to do pinup art or to sexualize anything. Now, going back into deciding what she should wear, I thought about one of my inspirations for this painting. 
Way back in elementary school, I made uh, a book as a school project called The Sea Anemone. So I drew an anemone, I drew a squid, I drew a mermaid, and some other sea creatures. So I figured I would incorporate elements from that book into this artwork. I figured that if I had a sea anemone draping over her shoulders, that would add a lot of color, it would add some novelty, and then I could even incorporate the clownfish. So I had decided that the mermaid wasn't going to be alone. We were going to have some other sea creatures around. And I wanted uh, a giant squid. I ended up doing the colossal squid. That was going to be a key piece. But for a sense of scale, I thought that I would have some smaller animals as well. So. I did a search with ChatGPT. I asked, what are the, the smallest squid out there? And it gave me a list of the 20 smallest squid, like the, the southern short fin squid, the southern pygmy squid, the European spear squid, and many other ones. I looked up and I found pictures of those different small squid, and I really liked how they were coming out. But the thing was, since I wanted to make them to scale, the, the resolution wasn't what it needed to be. They, they were coming out kind of grainy and, and pixelated. I was going to work with that, but then in the end, the composition, you'll see I ended up removing them. Now here we had detailing on the, the little suckers, the tentacles of the colossal squid. I really like how that came out here. laying in a lot of gray tones to try to get all my shading in before I put the colors down. I wasn't crazy about how the eye of the colossal squid looked at this point, but I ended up adjusting it more. Now here I'm just playing with what the, the hair of the, the mermaid might look like. And I'm laying down some flat colors for her body. Since all the layers are transparent, I had to lay in kind of some flat colors there for each layer so you could see how the different layers would um, interplay. Moving on to the placement of the, the clownfish, changing the angle of the classic squid in the background. And now here I had talked about earlier not making the mermaid look like with some, somebody in a potato sack. I started with the musculature, the, the, the anatomy of a human, but then I, I streamlined it here to be more fish-like. And I, I guess I wanted the proportions right in the beginning, which is why I started out with human anatomy, but then to make it more fish-like, I really streamlined it a lot. I had to adjust the scales as a consequence. I had some rough shape, shapes laid out for the hands, but that took quite a bit of tinkering with. I rendered out the, the mermaid's right hand, made a copy, mirrored that, and then altered it a little bit to be her, her left hand. And now the tricky thing was I wanted dramatic lighting, but I wanted this scene to take place deep underwater. I don't think in nature the colossal squid is going to come up that high to the surface. But if, if the scene took place low enough down in the water, then we wouldn't get a lot of lighting. So the realism is a hundred percent. Of course we really know that it's gonna have fancy elements, so I think I have a, a license here to take some um, artistic license. I wanted to make the scales pop a little bit, so I had to put some shading on each scale. And it's 
referring back and forth to the references I had of the carp to make the, the coloring look more realistic on the scales. You saw the reference image I had for sea anemone earlier. I wanted it to have a bioluminescent quality. And at this stage, I still have the books. small squid. Actually, what ended up happening was because I was adding more and more detail, I had more layers that I was using up. And so I took those little squid and I moved them over to uh, a separate canvas. And then somehow either the, the layer or the whole canvas um, got deleted somehow. So I lost those squid. I wasn't able to import them back into the canvas and I ended up losing them. Here's a cool little reference I found where it had several different cephalopods, like the, the, the cuttlefish, the squid, the octopus, the nautilus, and it's comparing their eyes. And their eyes are very different. And so that was one of the best references I found for making the squid's eye more realistic. Originally I had it almost in an almond shape, kind of human-like, but really it is more disc-like. Now I wanted to have some sense of the, the darkness of the deep ocean. I want to have some currents going. Got my signature in there as well. And a little I had a lot of sketch lines still around and I didn't want to get rid of them. But as far as the CNM and it goes, I inverted the sketch lines to negative and that gave it that bioluminescent pop that I was looking for. And I think speaking of a uh, pop, I think the, the clownfish being orange and then kind of purple and green tones in the neighborhood of blue being opposites on the color wheel. We need that clownfish pop. I was trying to get some sense of the, the currents movement of the water, but I didn't want it to look too busy and detract from what's going on in the foreground. I'll blur the hair a little bit to give some sense of it moving around. And earlier, when I was first playing with the layout of the hair, I had it all over the place. I was thinking that she was kind of hovering and then slowly sinking down into the water and it would surround her, but then it would block the eye of the, the squid. So I'm going to go all over to the right hand side. And then I took some of the sea anemone, copied it, and used it as a reflection on the eye of the squid. A lot of tinkering with the lighting at the end. 